All right. To be is to be perceived, says Barclay. To the extent that a thing exists, it exists as a perception in our minds. And if we don't have that perception, if we don't experience that sense data, we can't be confident that the thing actually exists. It has to, we have to have a perception of the thing in order to be confident to say that this thing actually exists. And so to the extent it exists, says Barclay, it exists as a perception. So Barclay agrees with Locke. We experience sense data. And so now what Barclay's going to do is he's going to turn back to Locke and he's going to say, hey, this sense data that we both agree uh, exists, where exactly does it come from? What caused this sense data to come into existence, Locke? And Locke's going to say, okay, well, here's my perception of things. Here's, what's, here's my sort of mental life. My, here's the picture I have of reality and my understanding of what exists and how it's structured. And I see two possibilities for the, um, for the existence of the stuff that I think exists in reality. One possibility is that there's some sort of divine creator that created the stuff that exists in reality. He created all the things that exist, and now I have experiences of their sense data, and that creates my mental life. The other possibility is that there's just always been stuff that's existed, and it has over, to, not over time, for all time, um, for infinity, it has been causing other stuff to exist and causing events to happen. Okay, so Bloch's going to say, I see these two possibilities for the creation of this stuff that I'm encountering right now. It's either the result of an infinite regression of events um, going back into infinity, or it's the result of having some divine creator having put it there for me to have these sense experiences of. Now, Barclay's going to come forward and say, dude, you admit you can't prove that this stuff actually exists. You've admitted that the only thing you can ever really be confident you know are your ideas of things. So let's shave off a part of your um, understanding of reality, Locke, and let's just eliminate the out there part, okay? Let's just cut that out. And instead of saying our sense data must be coming from stuff that was created or stuff that's already always existed, why don't we just say that the sense data is getting piped directly into us by this divine creator, which is what Barclay wants to believe, or that it's sense data that has always existed and you can trace back to an infinite regression of causes, and now it's just, I've encountered it, okay? So what Barclay does with Occam's razor is he, he cuts out the world out there. He says, I'm not denying that there's a possibility it exists. I'm just saying that in keeping with Occam's razor, these two possibilities both explain why I'm having the mental experience that I am of sense data, but this one requires fewer assumptions. I don't have to assume that there's a physical world out there, and this eliminates the, your problem, Locke. You've admitted you can't really get at the essence of substance and stuff. So let's just cut it out of our metaphysics. Okay. Now what Barclay's done here is he's created uh, what we would call idealism. Reality is constituted by ideas, not material things. It's not realism in the, in the sense that we would use that word when we talk about a reality out there. Reality is constituted by ideas. It would, it would be sort of like being plugged into the matrix, except the matrix exists in physical reality. Um, but what Barclay's saying is we don't know that anything physical exists. If, it's, it, it, if, if God is what created the sense data that's getting piped directly into me, God would be a non-physical being. And if it's, infinite, if it's an infinite series of sense data going back into time, that would also be non-material. So reality is not constituted by physical things. It's constituted by uh, ideas. Okay, So this is I Barclay's idealism. And this kind of flips Locke's understanding of the structure of reality on its head. Remember, Locke is saying, you know, there's this reality out here. We experience sense data from this reality out here it, that the stuff causes, right? That's the important point. The stuff causes us to have some sort of awareness of it, and that creates our picture of reality. And that picture of reality is really just kind of a representation of the way that things are. We don't directly experience reality. We just experience sense data that's associated with reality, Locke says. But Barclay's flipping that, and he's saying, no, that's not, that's not the right way. Flip it around. This representation that we have in our mind, this, this sum total collection of perceptions that we have, that's reality. Perception is reality. Okay. Now, there's a problem, though, here. 
with Barclay's thinking. And that's what we will encounter in the next lecture.